We all know that sexual health is a major and an addressed concern among breast cancer survivors. However, there is not a lot of information dissecting the longitudinal evolution of sexual concerns after a breast cancer diagnosis and its relationship with several factors beyond physical sector factors, but also psychosocial, interpersonal, cultural. So our study aimed to uh, assess the longitudinal evolution, what happens with a person and her sexual health after breast cancer cancer diagnosis and how is this addressed in clinical practice and also what are the factors associated with persistent sexual concerns up to two years after a diagnosis. So we use data from the Canto cohort which is a prospective longitudinal cohort uh, among 26 cancer centers in France and uh, we, we, we collected data at diagnosis one year after diagnosis and two years after diagnosis. Our study included more than 7,000 uh, women and uh, we, we found two important points uh, for the first part, that sexual concerns are already quite prevalent. There is a considerable proportion of women that already has a sexual concern at the moment of diagnosis and here we studied several domains, uh, poor body image, poor sexual functioning, poor sexual enjoyment, and also sexual inactivity. So there is a considerable proportion of patients that already have sexual concerns at diagnosis, and these concerns either go up, for example, for poor body image reaching up to more than 50% of the patients after a diagnosis, and for poor sexual enjoyment uh, reaching up to 40% of patients after diagnosis, or they persist over time. For example, for poor sexual functioning and poor sexual, and, and sexual inactivity with uh, up to 30% of the patients. We then looked at how is this addressed? What, what is the use of supportive uh, care strategies among patients with reported sexual concerns? And we found that uh, there is an underutilization of this service. For example, for patients reporting poor sexual functioning up to two years after diagnosis, so a persistent concern, uh, who should all ideally have received some sort of supportive care, we found out that only 40% of them had consulted a gynecologist and 15% of them had seen a psychologist. So uh, it highlights this uh, difficulty of addressing. The third point is that can we find factors that help us identify who, who will have this type of uh, concerns, who is more at risk of having a sexual concern two years after diagnosis. And we found interestingly that three factors were consistently associated with all the domain studies, poor body image, poor sexual functioning, poor sexual enjoyment, and sexual inactivity. These were already having the sexual concern itself at the moment of diagnosis, and uh, the use of endocrine therapy, and presenting an emotional distress after the end of primary treatment. So these are factors that the oncologist needs to have in mind uh, in order to be more proactive and anticipate and uh, because we need really a proactive uh, management and uh, uh, screening and management of sexual concerns uh, across the whole cancer, cancer care continuum, since diagnosis, after the end of treatment, during survivorship phase. Otherwise, we will not capture this and will not refer patients to multidisciplinary counseling, and, uh, which, which we know that there are effective interventions.